Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. When the sun rises up, it is exalting itself above the stars of God. When the sun comes up, the stars go away. And then it gets up in high noon, and it says, I will be like the Most High. And so the image of this Antichrist has to do with his wings. He is trying to be like Christ in rising up with healing in his wings. Only the Antichrist, when he rises, will bring death to the world. Not healing, not righteousness. It'll bring death. The symbolism of wings on something gives you the idea and the concept that it is an angel or a spiritual being of some kind. Let me read you some stories here. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 5, Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. Ezekiel 10, 5, And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. So these cherubs, the, and there was four. Remember the four men that were carrying this woman. These four principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, and high places. They bring to the world the false gospel. The real gospel is located in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See the similarities here. These angels have four wings. And when they flap their wings, they make a noise that is the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. And so God's speech is his word brought to mankind by way of the four Gospels and the whole Bible itself, written by 40 authors, 40 men, giving to the world this spiritual book, which is the Word of God. And so we have the opposite of that. We have the exact opposite of that. We have Satan's words in the Garden of Eden that represent what we were talking about earlier, the lost word of Freemasonry. That's what these wings represent. The the hidden voice of the Antichrist. Here is the incorruptible seed, and the devil's words, the Antichrist, the lost word, is the corruptible seed by which mankind is born again. In the parable of the seed and the sower, we talked about that earlier. The parable of the seed and the sower, which is in Mark chapter 4, you have the seed being sown. And it's sown to four different groups. One of those actually receives eternal life and goes to heaven. The other three die. But in the parable of the seed and the sower, the first place that the seed is cast out is to the wayside. That's outside of the garden. And Jesus said in that language that he used, he said the fowls of the heaven came down and, and picked it up. These have wings. When he gave the explanation of this parable, he's now taking the fowl of heaven, the birds, and he says the devil immediately taketh away the word. So this winged creature is symbolic of the beast and of his dominion over planet earth. That's what it represents. Revelation chapter 9 verse 9, And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. In this chapter, it is giving you a description of what not only just the king of the bottomless pit, Revelation 9-11, but those angels or fallen angels that arise with the Antichrist in the last days. They're coming out of the flames. There's, a, there's smoke like a furnace when the door is open up, and these creatures are rising up out of the flames of hell, and they have wings, and their wings are like the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. When these devils are let loose and the king, the bottomless pit, is let loose on planet earth, they are ready. There's a war going to take place and they will trample down mankind. That's what this is all about. That's what the symbolism of the phoenix is all about. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 16 shows you that the idea of these wings represent a god that is worshipped. Deuteronomy 4 16, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. Stop right here. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, the false prophet causes mankind to carve out an image of the beast that was dead and lived again. And he causes the image to have life. He gave life to the image of the beast. 
So lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, and the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. That's exactly what the phoenix is. It is a, it is a likeness of a winged fowl that, is, that was carved out and is worshipped by all mankind. Remember, they worship the creature more than the creator. That's what they're doing. And God was warning us in the book of Deuteronomy that this creature is going to represent a God that mankind is going to worship. Now, think about this. We have the wings and we have, uh, we have fire. Let me show you in the fourth book of the Bible, the book of Numbers, a biblical story that I believe it really happened. Let me show you this symbolism from the scriptures, Numbers, Numbers chapter 21, which is the fourth book of the Bible. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. Now notice the fiery serpent. Set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. The Bible describes here in Numbers chapter 21, in the fourth book of the Bible, these fiery serpents, Moses setting them setting the image of that made of brass on a pole. And he said, when they look upon that, they live. We have a hymn that we sing all the time. Look and live, my brother, live. Because here's the interesting part. In the fourth book of the New Testament, the book of John, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he said, as Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Was Jesus the Antichrist? No. But the Bible says later in the book of Colossians that Jesus triumphed over his enemies on the cross and that he made a show of his enemies openly. Jesus, by his death on the cross, was showing the defeat of the Antichrist in the last days when he was lifted up on the cross of Calvary. He was showing the defeat. I absolutely love that symbolism. Jesus the Bible says he became sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus literally depicting the man of sin being crucified on the cross and destroying the power of sin. Then we look at a further analogy in Isaiah chapter 14, which is the same chapter you find Lucifer spoken of. Isaiah 14, 29, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root... The serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery, flying serpent. Are you kidding me? He's describing the phoenix bird. And he says that the phoenix, in Isaiah 14, 29, is the serpent's root. He shall come forth. It's the fruit of the serpent. Now, you and I, as born-again Christians, we have the fruit of the Spirit, uh, the angel told Mary, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus Christ. And so, here in the Garden of Eden, you have two trees. One is the tree of life, one is the tree of death, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat it, you die. And on these trees, you have the fruit of those trees. The tree of life, the fruit of that tree, represents Jesus Christ, the righteous. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, you have a fruit hanging on it, and it's forbidden. You're not supposed to eat it. It represents the phoenix, the fiery, flying serpent that is the fruit of Lucifer himself. Remember back in 2 Thessalonians, we, were, we, we showed you, in fact, I have, it, I have it pulled up right here. Even him whose, working is at, whose coming is after the working of Satan. The fruit and the root of Satan is the phoenix, the beast, the Antichrist. The um, Aztec Indians, when um, Cortez came and landed over here, the, the Aztec Indians had part of this mythology as their religion. 
Uh, and remember, uh, Pike and, and Manly Hall, they wrote about all these sort of dying God figures. And here's the interesting thing, and this is what throws some people off. The dying God figures, in many cases, always died either like hanging on a tree or they died like on a, on a pole or a cross of some kind. And they are awaiting resurrection. Now remember, Jesus did that, but he's showing the death and the defeat of the Antichrist himself by him being on the cross. And this is what throws some people off because they don't understand the symbolism because they won't read the Bible. They don't understand the symbolism of the Bible. The Bible will explain what it means. And this is where we get our wisdom and knowledge from, from the scriptures. But the idea is that some people say, well, Jesus is just another one of those gods. No, because God has already raised him back from the dead. In the case of the Antichrist, it's humanity that brings him back from the dead, led by the spirit of Isis, who puts together the pieces of the dismembered body of her dead husband. That's what that represents. Anyway, the, uh, the Aztec Indians... They had this humongous religion. They did sacrifices, and oh, by the way, they had pyramids. Remember the temple? Uh, that's what they had. And their god was called Quetzalcoatl. You know what Quetzalcoatl was? He was a phoenix. He was a fiery, flying, plumed serpent. He had feathers. Quetzalcoatl was a phoenix. And he was destroyed, and here's an image of it. The phoenix was destroyed on what looks like a cross. Now, I want you to think about this and, and all the things that we've learned. The cross symbol itself is a representation of the human chromosomes where our DNA is stored. It, that's what it is. Remember what Satan, and there's 46 of those. Remember what Lucifer did in the Garden of Eden. He spoke death. He bit Eve with his words and put his poison into her, literally into her seed, into her DNA, into her chromosomes. He spoke 46 words in the King James Bible, by the way. So you get this idea of the dead God. Actually, he, he resides in us, in our flesh. Paul referred to him in Romans 7 as the no good thing. He said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. The seed of the Antichrist is already in this flesh. That's what Quetzalcoatl represents. Quetzalcoatl is the phoenix. He is the plumed, fiery, flying serpent. And God, in the book of Numbers, sent the, the serpents, the fiery, flying serpents, into the land to bite and poison and kill people because they rejected God. You go back and read 2 Thessalonians 2. This is precisely why God releases the Antichrist into the world. The Bible says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They didn't want to hear the truth of the gospel, the real gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So they believed the false gospel based upon principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Paul references this very same event, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9. Listen to what he said. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed. That word destroyed is related to Apollo and Abaddon, the destroyer, the king of the bottomless pit, the dis and destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon, the, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And Paul talked about in 2 Thessalonians, there's going to come a falling away first. And so the Bible wrote these stories plainly for us so that we could understand the death and the rising again of the beast by way of the imagery of the phoenix in the last days. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, I referenced this a while ago. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them, 